Greetings, Culture Warriors. This is Jeff Vieira, author of Culture is Everything, with the latest Dispatch from the Front. Today we're going to take a look at uh, a, a little uh, segment that we call War Crimes. Uh, looking at those companies uh, who have kind of run afoul of some of uh, the negative implications of not living your culture. And to get us started, I want to take a look at the 10 worst companies to work for in 2020. And so this list came out, uh, the data comes from 24-7 Wall Street, based on ratings that you'll find on Glassdoor.com. And I want to talk about 2020's worst of the worst, according to this rating system. The company is called Forever 21. Some of you may be familiar with it. I am not. I have never set foot in a Forever 21. I can't remember ever seeing one. So perhaps it's just so regional that... Um, uh, that I haven't run across it. Uh, perhaps it's simply that I spend so little time in malls. Um, I, I don't recognize it. It's a woman's apparel store. So that may have had something to do with it, but the overall rating on Glassdoor, I believe this is out of 10 is a 2.5 CEO approval rating 30%. So 30% of the employees that are posting on Glassdoor approve of the CEO. There's 30,000 employees. So this is a sizable retail company. And they're in the retail apparel industry. Reading from the article, the average employee rating of Forever 21 is just 2.5 stars out of 5. Sorry about that. I thought it was out of 10. Tied for the lowest rating of any company based in the United States. Many employees cite inadequate benefits and strict company policies as drawbacks to working at Forever 21. Over the years, the store has been hit with several high-profile lawsuits, including several filed by employees. In 2012, five Forever 21 employees filed a class-action lawsuit against the company. The plaintiffs claim that they and their co-workers were routinely detained in the store during lunch breaks and after their shifts without overtime pay, so managers could search their bags for stolen merchandise, a part of the company's former loss prevention policy. Indeed, many employees on Glassdoor complained of not getting to leave the store until 2 a.m. or later, hours after the stores close, often receiving no overtime pay for extra hours. Wow, that's pretty bad. So just on the face of it, what does that say about the values as lived by Forever 21? Well, it seems like uh, trust of employees is certainly not a value which is being lived. If you have to detain people during breaks and at the, at the end of their shifts to search their bags for, because you think that they've stolen something, well, that's a, uh, that's an indication that you don't really trust that you're hiring employees who won't steal from you. Now, I know the fact of the matter is, is that in the retail industry in particular, shrinkage is a reality. Uh, shrinkage from customers coming in and stealing, shrinkage from uh, employees stealing. I worked in the supply chain uh, industry for quite some time, and we even ran into situations where uh, employees would pull up to a warehouse on the weekend and fill their truck up with valuable uh, supplies that they stole. So it's true that what we call shrinkage, loss prevention, uh, it's thievery, whether on the part of customers or employees, and it is a big problem in industries where people have access to valuable items. But it seems a little bit excessive to have to do that on everyone's break and uh, at shift change it seems like there's certainly um, better ways to do that, not least of which would be don't hire people who are prone to thievery. Beyond that, when you do keep them, 
essentially making it on their time also speaks to another value issue with regard to integrity. If you're going to tie up an employee for that long, you need to pay them. And if it's past their shift, then you need to pay them overtime. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain that that's the law in most states at this point. But not paying them for the extra hours that you've forced them to incur is a dishonest practice in and of itself. You know, if you don't want to have to put in the time to do that, then find another way to prevent the loss. Uh, but it's not right to tie somebody up, make it mandatory, and not pay them appropriately. So I went out to the Forever 21 website to see what they say about it. They didn't have much in terms of the uh, the standard kind of values, but they did have a section on social responsibility that was pretty comprehensive. I want to read you some selections from that. I won't read the whole thing. It says, just as a consumer has choices, at Forever 21, we take our business choices seriously, including the way we obtain products we sell. We strive to have a positive impact, not only within our stores and corporate family, but also upon the environment and on the hundreds of vendor manufacturing facilities throughout the world and their employees. We see these choices as part of a work in progress as we constantly strive to improve in each of these areas. Protecting the environment. They have a recycling program. Workers' rights and protection. I want to read a little bit more of this because this is probably on point. Forever 21 insists that all product suppliers ensure that their employees work in safe and healthy environments and that their legal rights are respected and protected. Forever 21 also shares the goal of eliminating child labor and forced labor. They have a vendor audit program to help ensure that that standard is being held to by their vendors. So they actually go out and check on the conditions uh, that the workers are experiencing uh, in, within their supply chain. Their vendor agreements include safety and human rights standards for their workers. They do this despite the fact that Forever 21 is simply a retailer. They don't manufacture any of it. They have guidelines in there about not discriminating on the basis of national origin, race, sex, marital status, religion, age, disability, mental condition, veteran status, sexual orientation, in any employment action related to their vendor's workforce. Anti-child slavery, anti-trafficking. Ethical sourcing. They have a fur-free policy. They banned Angora. No mohair. They, they signed the Cotton Pledge, which apparently uh, bans cotton from Uzbekistan for some, for some reason. Okay. They have charity programs, especially the Boys and Girls Clubs. And they take part in California's Transparency and Supply Chains Act, which helps kind of enforce those standards. So on the face of it, you look at this culture and you say, okay, this is a company that cares about the reputation. They care about how workers are treated. They care about how animals are treated, thus the fur-free policy. They care about the environment. And so they've got a, some pretty solid values that they extend to the people they do business with. So how do you wind up being the worst place to work, given all that? Well, my friends, you know what the answer is. It's because you're not living up to that culture. You've put in place a series of standards that you want to rigorously enforce for your vendors, but you're not holding yourself to similar standards. That's a problem. That's probably the source of their these ongoing lawsuits and the damage to this company's reputation. Apparel retailers have 
a big issue in this area. And that's because the countries where they source their material tend to have terrible working conditions for their employees. Bangladesh is a big garment center. It's a very poor country. And it also has very poor working conditions. It also has a problem with child labor. It has a problem with slave labor. It has a problem with human trafficking. All these things are problems in these countries. They've long been problems within the industry. If you turn turn back the clock and the calendar a century, you'll find those same issues uh, in the American garment industry where child labor used to be quite common and working conditions used to be quite poor. So this is nothing new for this industry and it's become kind of a minimal commitment for the players in the industry to provide safe working environments and to ban child and slave labor. That's kind of the minimum standard. Now, it persists to this day. Why? Because they're not living their cultures either. And you can fool auditors and you can sweep things under the rug. And, you know, you have some incentive to be complicit in not looking too deeply into this. But I think what we have here is a case of Forever 21 really needs to read their own standards, translate them into their own retail working environment, and say, look, how can we make this better? And until they do so, they're going to continue to have an absolutely terrible reputation. And I find it hard to believe the companies that have such terrible reputations get the best and brightest employees. Anyone can go look up on Glassdoor and see what a company is like, and a lot of people do. Anyone can ask around and get word of mouth on it, and a lot of people do. So ultimately, if you want to solve this problem with pilferage, I think you got to look at treating people better. I think you got to look at hiring people you can trust rather than treating everyone that you hire as though they are a suspect. And if you're not able to do that, you got 30,000 employees. Why are you treating all 30,000 as though they were casing your business for a burglary? That makes no sense. If you had 30,000 thieves as your employees... I would recommend you hand out 30,000 pink slips and hire somebody who you can trust. So I don't think the problem is that Forever 21 has the wrong values. I think it's that they have the wrong mechanism for enforcing the behaviors to fulfill and comply with those values. And this pandemic and the turmoil in the retail apparel industry that has resulted from it is a great opportunity to rethink this a little bit, see if we can't do something that might change this for the better and get this company off of that worst company to work for list. Because let's face it, banning mohair and banning fur is great, But culture is everything. Thank you. Have a great day.